Dorn is a farmer and researcher on his family's 250-acre organic farm in Lee, New Hampshire, where he grows grains, oil seeds, and livestock. He's a co-founder of FarmHack, an open-source community with over thousands of members from all over the globe, documenting, building, designing, and sharing tools for resilient agriculture, the, the new wave using technology effectively and communicating effectively. He's also the executive director of the nonprofit Green Start, which has the mission to foster a resilient food and food supply for New Hampshire. He's a PhD candidate in natural resources and earth system science at the University of New Hampshire, doing a fascinating analysis of sort of the, the turning point in the Enlightenment with some of the key thinkers who were looking to found an economy in the soil and in a, in a, in a an ecologically sensitive way and kind of coming back to that as maybe a transition point for us in our time. Uh, Dorn's going to be talking about open sourcing agriculture. Welcome, Dorn. So it's fantastic to be here. I'm really excited and what a time we live in where we can contemplate the microbes in our soil, the microbes in our body, and global climate change and start to have that conversation not just with our neighbors and contemplate this but we can actually now communicate with every other human on earth for the first time in history and I think we're just beginning to come to terms with what that means the, the power that we start to have and how that's starting to affect the way we view ourselves in our environment and so I really want to, to sort of come back to the fundamentals that Tools, the tools we use, the technology, the tools we use are really a reflection of how we see ourselves in our environment, our understanding of the systems that we are living in, and they're constantly evolving. And so it's really important to think about the process that develops those tools. Who owns, who has ownership of that? Who has control of the tools that both support us and uh, affect us so dramatically in how, how we live. And I think that's what the organic movement has realized and what's resonated is that it's not just about the products. It's about the processes that produce them and how they're produced and what that means. And I think that's this, uh, an, uh, a maturing of culture to start to understand that, that process. Um, and so what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about some of the, the tools that we've used to reflect back on us. This is an Apollo image. This is a product of uh, humans being able to generate this. And it spawned, it put us in a different position, a different perspective, it spawned our ability to start to look at the way in which we have used our resources and put us in a different, in, in a different context and to be able to start to contemplate the effect that we have in the extractive process that we've gone through through the Industrial Revolution. And even the, the history of agriculture has largely been extractive because we've, we're just now beginning with these tools to be able to measure and understand the processes that we're involved with and also that we're, we have an ability to not only degrade but also improve and understand. And so that's where we see this ability to communicate with each other has also had a dramatic effect on how much we can understand and the costs involved in that. And because the costs, because we're now able to talk to each other and communicate and accumulate knowledge from one another, we're able to change that structure and who has the power in that system. So the first two images you saw, those are generated by governments. Billions of dollars went into creating that. What I'm going to show you now is a byproduct of this process of collaboration and open source. So this is an image of my farm that costs not, just, not hundreds of thousands of dollars or thousands of dollars. The equipment to do this is now hundreds of dollars and the images themselves are fractions of pennies. And we can zoom down into a different level of resolution. Here we can, I can see where cover crops and those dark green dots uh, were used, legumes and tillage radish show up as dark green. That's nitrogen saved that we can see and share into a high, higher resolution down into the ground, uh, sensors that cost uh, to really understand the, the systems and be able to see at a level beyond what the human vision allows, a different perspective, but also beyond the human spectrum. 
we can see into, pho this is a uh, NDVI image with photosynthesis. This is something that's all now accessible to individuals, to communities, to towns for watershed planning. And it's built on, you may be familiar with open source technology, you've heard, you know, Wikipedia, Apache servers run the internet, but this is really a community uh, building on one another's accomplishments. It's an accumulation uh, of communities, and that's where FarmHack comes in. Our focus is on taking, building on those accomplishments, but focusing those tools back on the systems uh, that created the wealth in the first place, instead of focusing on maximum extraction, focus on maximum understanding of these systems that are creating it, and developing tools that work within that context. So what does that mean? So that's people talking to people, getting together, creating, mixing, sharing, making, growing, drinking together, eating together, exchanging ideas, and this takes place on the ground, in person, but we now also have the ability to take those conversations, those good late night conversations, those brainstorms, those ideas, and then host it, and then that can be picked up anywhere on earth. And so this is what it looks like. It's, it's fun, it's gathering people, together to talk about what's possible. And it's on the ground, it's in, it's in granges, it's in homes, it's around fires, it's about eating food, it's about drinking together. So this sounds, it's all technologically based, this sounds like a new idea, but really there's a deep, deep history here. So going back to the 20s, this is a diagram published in the Encyclopedia of Practical Farm Knowledge. The community club being the heart, a biological metaphor for the exchange, free giving of ideas, information, and inspiration, and receiving from all ideas and inspiration. Going from the soil to the farm to the community club and circulating and improving. And the lifeblood. Going back even further, as uh, 1700s uh, economists who, uh, uh, who conceived of agriculture as the root and uh, culture uh, uh, as uh, represented by the tree, the population as the trunk, nourishment from the, from the roots, and arts and commerce being a byproduct of that, and uh, cycling through. And if you had a storm, he's, uh, Kiesne, Francis Kiesne said, the, uh, the leaves and branches would regenerate, but if something were to attack the roots, the whole tree would wither and perish. And so this is really important when we're looking at expanding who the, you know, who's in, involved in agriculture. From this point of view, everybody is, and agriculture is fundamentally different from all other human enterprises. And of course we say that, but I think this is uh, extraordinarily important, and I think that's what we're seeing now when people care about the processes of the food that they eat. And so open source, again, sounds like something to do with software. You go back to, this is the basis of civilization. You think about seed saving and exchange. This is the process of that code, all that work that went into developing those seeds is the process of accumulated knowledge in that assembly code that represents the local adaptation, cross-pollination, et cetera. And that's what we're talking about doing, but instead of doing it in a seed, we can do it in thumb drives, we can do it in drop boxes, we can do it in wikis. And so that's what it looks like when you start putting into hardware. It's appropriate scale equipment, small combines to medium to larger that fit the, the scale of the environment. And we can also bring back extinct technology if we have the documentation. Uh, farm hack, for example, an oat dehuller at the farm scale, no longer manufactured, no longer available, but we had the plans. We were able to build from the plans, able to digitize those plans, able to then put those components into a library which can be exchanged anywhere on earth and then remanufactured locally. We now have the ability to take those files and create the components that we need. And this changes the power dynamic of the industrial process, where it puts it into the tools that are then accessible, ownable by the individual or by the community. And so this is what it looks like. It means the farm shop becomes not just a place to fix the industrial components, but to innovate and change and adapt to your local conditions and share that knowledge. And so this is what it looks like. And the, the, the processes, the, the products from that can be everything from this is a biodiesel processor, totally open, open sourced, 
fairly complex, fairly expensive piece, but it can also be more simple things that have more to do with the biology and the process of crimping cover crops and the knowledge involved in making that process work. This is Rodale's uh, cover crop uh, crimper, which is the first generation. It's been iterated on since, but they started this process saying, we're not going to patent this. We're going to put this out there to be modified and improved. But it's not just about it's not just about electronics and it's not just about steel and welding and, and, and soldering. It's also about biology and the context in which we use this. This tool is the reflection of our environment. So when we understand that a, uh, a cover crop, a radish, may substitute for uh, a huge amount of diesel and, and steel, we need to be able to communicate that knowledge as well. And the simple uh, understanding of the context between planting dates and, the, uh, and how these tools are used. So another example that, uh, of the farm hack process is this problem solving. Uh, so in the context of understanding our environment, one of the problems is, is greenhouse temperature. And we, uh, so one of the first projects was a text message that let you know when your greenhouse might overheat or get too cold. This is quickly iterated into an uh, electric fence monitor that you, could, that you could use that will let you know when the fence, uh, your uh, electric fence was out or turn it off with your mobile phone. Quickly evolved. This is a matter of months of iterations. No patents involved. Quickly iteration by the community to now a, a company that's actually uh, developing open source hardware uh, that's enabled to have these, each of these sensors talk to one another um, to be able to monitor the environment um, and be able to report back uh, environmental data. And like I said, our, under, our, our tools are a reflection of our understanding of our environment. The more we understand our environment, the more we're able to improve the system that created this wealth in the first place. And so this quickly monitored not just from greenhouse automation, now to water quality. And there's, uh, um, and the cost of these systems is a small fraction of what the commercial system. So we're talking not thousands of dollars now, but tens of dollars or even maybe hundreds of dollars. And so this is what it looks like in the field. And these are not all farmers. This is, these are people coming together, working on the food system and monitoring. Here it involves both water, putting uh, low cost cameras in the air to generate these images, all run on open source software. Uh, aircraft, also all open source, a few hundred dollars now. So, and if we don't control this technology, we will be controlled by this technology. And so that's what's important about this open source movement. It goes from something that's controlling us, you think about an aircraft like this, to something that we're using and turning back again to understand our own environment. And so we're at the point right now where we're building our own tools. We're like the blacksmith creating our first tongs and hammers to be able to build more complex structures and share that information. It's like, to use a biological metaphor, we're the, the, in the open source movement, we're the, uh, the single cell organisms starting to be, generate more complex uh, 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 structures and sensory uh, to be able to understand our environment. Um, and generate uh, uh, neurons and exoskeletons and then skeletons. This is what we're doing right now. This is where we're at with the uh, open source uh, movement. And so, but we're not in it alone. This is, this is a group effort because we have so much overlap. So this is just a few uh, examples of the organizations and individuals that are coming together to say this is part of our mission is to share our accomplishments and build on each other's work and not duplicate efforts. And so to conclude, I think that again to come back to the tools or reflection of our values and a reflection the process is important and that in order to build a food system and in fact a, a culture that we can be proud of, it's a process of sharing and, and exchanging ideas and that that's the, one of the most important things we can do and that that's what's going to shift the power from those who 
uh, derive it from controlling information and controlling capital to those who derive their power from mixing their labor with the environment and sharing the best ideas that they have to, to further this great human experiment that we can be proud of. So thank you very much.